Welcome to this video. It's time to look at getting into the eternal format. Perhaps you've heard about this format before. You've kind of seen it on Twitter or seen people talking about it somewhere else. And it's kind of caught your eye. You're a little interested because you don't know how to get started. This is the video for you. This is the video where you're going to learn the basics of the format, see some deck lists, see some format staples, and learn how to play some games. So without any pause, without any further ado, let's jump into the overview for this video. At first, we're going to do exactly what I was talking about. We're going to find out what the eternal format even is. What are some examples of decks in the eternal format? We have lots of them, big format. And what are some eternal format staple cards that I should have on hand? Of course, if you're thinking about playing eternal format with some friends, maybe you should have a few of these on hand. And then where can you even play the eternal format? That's, of course, a big question. If you want to play the eternal format, there's some resources for that, too. All right, now. What is the Eternal Format? It is kind of like this third format on the list of official Pokemon TCG formats. So the Eternal Format is an unofficial format, so we'll keep that in mind. But before we kind of dive a little bit more into that, we're going to first explain what these formats even mean. So Standard, Expanded, and Unlimited. Standard Format is the biggest format for the Pokemon trading card game. It is the one that is the most competitive. It is the one that all currently all sanctioned events use for championship points if you're trying to qualify for the world championships you are going to be playing in a standard format so that's consisting of the last three most recent regulation marks and it rotates each year to remove the oldest regulation mark from the format so currently before, as of recording this video the standard format is regulation marks e f and g and come april 5th this year that will change to f g and h so e regulation mark will leave H regulation mark will join. And then there is the expanded format, which says, okay, let's not rotate every year. We're going to take cards from black and white forward, and we're going to use those for our card pool. So you get cards all the way back to 2011, which is bigger. Uh, because it is so much bigger, there's some kind of unintended interactions that cause problems. So there is a ban list to help deal with that. And expanded format, of course, a little bit bigger, quite a few more decks to try to play. And then the last of the official formats is unlimited. Now, Unlimited does not see any sanctioned play, primarily because right now you can't sanction anything in that in the first place, but or at least not any championship point event. But Unlimited also just doesn't get any support. It's a Wild West format, right? It's got cards all the way back to the original base set, all the way from 1999 onward. There is no ban list, though. There's no real restrictions for deck building other than the ones that are printed on the cards and game rules. So basically, it's coming down to if your deck is built optimally for this format, and you're going to want to build optimally if you're going to play in it, you will win if you win the coin flip. That's what it's going to come down to. There is more skill in flipping the coin than in playing the game because it's just kind of whoever goes first. That is unfortunately the situation for Unlimited, but that is Unlimited. Now, what if we took Unlimited and said, okay, there, you could play this format. Let's take the Wild West part away. Let's make it interesting still. Let's have that huge card pool, but let's get a ban list put together so that you can tame all of those uh, game breaking things and make it so that there's actually back and forth. There's actual Pokemon TCG to be played. Well, that is when you get the eternal format. So we're going to take out the unlimited thing because now it's not really unlimited anymore, but there is no rotation. There's just, there is a ban list, right? It's not a wild west anymore. And there's no longer that aspect of the player who wins the coin flip winning the game. So now if you want the eternal format description, it is cards all the way back to base set. There's a ban list to help keep it in check. It is a massive card pool and by extension, also a fairly large ban list. Don't get me wrong, it's a, not a small ban list. As of recording, it's approximately 150 cards, but you're also having a lot of cards to look at and use in this format already. So it works out great. Now, what are some examples of Eternal Format decks? What decks might you be seeing in an Eternal Format tournament? And they do happen. We have had several of them. And I, when I say several, I mean quite a few, actually. Um, but let's see. So this is Blindside Not To. There is a video on, or a couple of videos on my channel of this particular deck in action. So the very general idea for this deck is you have Not To, and it uses its ancient trait to take additional price cards when it takes knockouts. And it's taking knockouts because you're spreading some damage on your opponent's side of the board, and then using Technical Machine Blindside in combination with Dimension Valley. So Blindside, you're gonna attach a DCE. Dimension Valley, you're gonna reduce the attack cost of Blindside by one. So you're using that attack, so you're going to attack for just two energy, and you're gonna do 100 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. You see where this is going. Now, the Ancient Trade on Natu does 
does the effect that you get an extra prize card when you take a knockout. So if your opponent's being greedy and they don't get an, a Mr. Mime out, you're able to just immediately take an additional prize card on one of their support Pokemon. Perhaps they've had to bench a Lapras with support navigation, right? Now you take two prize cards off a of Lapras. Or maybe they have a benched Claydol. This deck itself runs Claydol. Now you're taking two prize cards off of Claydol. So this deck works really cool. It's really fun. It is a little vulnerable to, to Mr. Mime. Of course, you can always bench up or gust up the Mr. Mime, either with Custom Catcher or with Guzma. But really fun to play, even with that little bit of vulnerability. And then we have Bennett Vileplume. So Bennett Vileplume, kind of one of the early boogeymans of the format, right? You have Item Lock in the form of Vileplume. Vileplume, both from Undaunted and Angel Origins, are going to prevent you from using item cards. One of them is using a Poke Body. The other is an ability. That is a distinction in the Eternal format. They are different. So things that affect abilities don't affect Poke Powers or Poke Bodies. Keep that in mind. They are separate. Um, so if you shut off the ability of Vileplume from Ancient Origins, the Vileplume from Undaunted still has its Poke Body. So you could still be item locking your opponent in that way. So basically your idea here is you're going to item lock with one of the Vileplumes. And then Bennett is going to use Poltergeist, which does 60 damage for each trainer card you find in your opponent's hand. You're, they're going to reveal your, their hand to you and then you're doing a bunch of damage. I will say for the record, when they can't use item cards, that adds up very, very quickly because it hurts when they are unable to get rid of all their item cards. Cards. Eternal format decks love item cards, especially the mo most turbo decks are like they're all item cards. You see, this deck here is super heavy on supporter cards because it's item locking itself too with with Vile Plume. So it has to still be able to function without a whole lot of item cards. You know, turn one, maybe even early turn two, it can use some item cards because it hasn't locked everything yet. But once it locks stuff, it needs to be able to retreat into its supporter cards and keep that momentum going. So Bennett hits very hard with Vileplume. Really fun deck to play. And like I said, it was one of the early boogeymen of the format. We also have Malamar. There's also a couple videos, at least one video, if not two videos, on my channel for this deck. If you ever played Psychic Recharge Malamar from Forbidden Light in the standard format when it was around, you'll enjoy the heck out of this deck. You have access to Spell Tag, Dimension Valley, Moonlight Stadium. Right, We talked about Dimension Valley earlier, reducing your attack costs uh, by one for your psychic Pokemon. So something like Giratina would be able to attack for two energy instead of three. Giratina, of course, brings itself back from the discard pile and puts damage counters on two, a damage counter on each of two of your opponent's Pokemon, uh, on bench Pokemon. And then you have Giratina level X with its Pokebody invisible tentacles that forces your opponent to discard a card from their hand if they want to attack your Pokemon. So you <laughs> You're just going full troll face with this one. You also have Necrozma V and Necrozma GX. This is kind of a toolboxy style deck. Giratina is a super, super good attacker that makes you do really well against single prizers and Necrozma V and Necrozma GX, of course, are your attackers against multi prizers. And then Dawnwing's Necrozma lets you kind of force yourself in the X spot so that you can put your attackers to the bench to get them psychic recharged before retreating it back out with Floatstone or with Moonlight Stadium. Malamar, very fun deck. Copperaja EX, very much not a thing in standard format, but in Eternal, it has it has some options and it does all right. So you have Jasmine that lets you set up by allowing you to get five metal Pokemon from your deck on turn one going second, wild. But in general, you just have a lot of options for accelerating energy. You have Metal Link's Bronzong that pulls a metal energy from your discard pile and attaches it to one of your benched Pokemon, just like Malamar in a previous list here which is kind of cool, but it actually gets cooler because unlike most special energy, special metal energy is always a metal energy card, which means that metal links can see it in the discard pile and can attach it to one of your benched Pokemon. Way cool. And then of course, Caparaja itself as a stage one Pokemon has 300 HP and you have so many ways to reduce damage on Caparaja, including its own bronze body ability, which reduces damage it takes by 30. So you have that, you have your metal frying pan. They also reduce the damage you're taking by 30. Special metal energy itself reduces it by 10. You have so many ways to reduce damage that you're taking. And as if that weren't enough, you have Crystal Cave to heal off little bits of damage too, to make it even harder for your opponent to actually take a knockout. It's a really fun deck to play and super, super bold. Up next, you have a new boogeyman on the format, Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX with its horrendous G-Max Rapid Flow attack that does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, in Eternal Format, you do have access to Alolan Muck with its Power of Alchemy ability that shuts off the abilities of basic Pokemon in play, which basically means that all those Bench Barrier, Mr. Mimes, Muse, and Manaphys suddenly don't have an effect. And if they really, really want to get rid of it, they can drop a Lost City and smack it to get it to the Lost Zone on top of everything else. And then Urshifu is just free to play by G-Max Rapid Flowing your entire board until you have to concede because you've lost. It's it's a wild, wild deck. Of course, it struggles a little bit more with higher HP Pokemon or Pokemon that can reduce damage like Copper Raja before. 
but the deck all the same is extraordinarily powerful and definitely worth playing in the eternal format. Another boogeyman of the format. <laughs> this one saw quite a play for quite a quite a lot of play rather for quite a while. This is Ultra Necrozma. Ultra Necrozma from Cosmic Eclipse has the ability Ultra Burst that prevents it from attacking unless your opponent has two or fewer prize cards remaining. Well, that doesn't seem very good, does it? But we can shut that ability off with Garbotoxin on Garboder. Garboder's Garbotoxin says if it has a Pokemon tool card attached to it, it's shutting off the abilities of every Pokemon in play, except Garbotoxin. So nice. That means Ultra Burst, that ability that's shutting off our ability to attack is gone. We can attack. And with Double Dragon Energy, we can attach a single energy to Ultra Necrozma and do 170 damage as a single prizer. And as if that weren't enough, we're also going to discard an energy card when we do. So they're losing energy. So even if we don't knock them out, they're still losing energy. It's harder for them to attack. And we're getting that knockout a good chunk of the way there. If that is, we're not going just going against a single prize deck in the first place. And if we are going against a single prize deck in particular, we have Life 2 to make that prize trade just a little bit sweeter. Life 2 is an ace spec tool card that when attached to a Pokemon reduces the number of prize cards our opponent takes for knocking it out by one, which means if it's attached to an Ultra Necrozma, suddenly they're not taking prize cards for knocking it out. Pretty busted. And of course, there is Gardevoir EX from Scarlet and Violet base set with a whole array of an amazing Gardevoir in its arsenal. There's also some Gallades, although they have not made the deck list. Uh, this is a deck list that was proposed by the person who came in second at our most recent in real life uh, Eternal Format tournament with Gardevoir. It's a little different than what they actually ran in the tournament, but this is what they proposed. So you see Buddy Buddy Puff in there. Buddy Puff is the proxy from before the official name was revealed, but the idea is very similar to Gardevoir and how it operated in the standard format prior to rotation. You have Shining Arcana Gardevoir to look at the top two cards of your deck and you're either drawing those or attaching them with their energy, which is pretty nice. But you also have that Brainwave attack that does 60 damage plus 30 more for each Psychic Energy card attached to that guard. So you're doing big damage with that Gardevoir. And then as if that weren't enough, you have the Gardevoir from Black and White Era with a Psychic Mirage that doubles the number of energy attached to your Gardevoir. So if you actually only have three energy attached to Gardevoir, suddenly it's six. So that Brainwave effectively doubles the damage you're adding to it. Then on top of that, you have Telepass. Gardevoir has the Pokemon power Telepass. This says once during your turn, you may search your opponent's discard pile for a supporter card and use the effect of that card as the effect of this power. That supporter card remains in your opponent's discard pile and you can't use more than one Telepass Poke power each turn. So if your opponent happens to have a very good supporter card in the discard pile, you can take advantage of that supporter card with Telepass. So you are basically getting your own supporter card for turn and then abusing a supporter card that your opponent has. It makes all the difference for the consistency of this deck and it does need that extra consistency and then of course you have mirage step which is about to rotate from our standard format where you're able to get three curly into play right away all in all this deck is quite a high power level but it's also <clears throat> all in all this deck is an extremely powerful deck that requires quite a high skill level to pilot well but it's a very fun deck to play and quite cool to see in action up next, we have Weezing from Deoxys. Weezing has the liability attack that brings your opponent's active Pokemon down to 10 HP, no matter what their big HP happens to be. And then with the poison applying effect of either one of your Pokemon or Hypnotoxic Laser, you're going to finish off that last 10 damage during Pokemon checkup, knocking them out between turns and taking your sweet juicy price cards. You have access to Recycle Energy to constantly get that back or Rescue Energy to get Weezing and its evolution line back instead. All in all, pretty powerful stuff. And then Protection Cube makes it so that Liability, which also does 70 damage to Weezing, no longer does that 70 damage to Weezing. So if your opponent doesn't have a response to take out your Weezing that next turn, you have Weezing still ready to go to take out the next Pokemon that your opponent puts in front of you. Really cool card. And the fact that it uses so many older cards is also quite fun. And then there is Maridon with Pidgeot. Maridon is a known quantity in the Eternal format, but it's also a known quantity in Standard format. You're probably looking at this deck and going, well, I recognize a couple of those cards. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Unlimited or with even Expanded, a lot of these cards might be fairly foreign to you. So the Pidgey is a Delta Species Pidgey that Maridon can find because it's Lightning type. Maridon searches out two Lightning type Pokemon. That Pidgey happens to be Lightning type. So you can get it onto your bench and get it evolved up into Pidgeota with Airmail that draws you cards. And the original Quick Search Pidgeot, which you guessed it, searches your deck for a card and puts it into your hand, just like Pidgeot EX. Raikou, just like the regular Maridon deck, super good, does damage based on the number of bench Pokemon in play. Tapu Koko Prism Star, of course, pulls a couple of Lightning Energy 
from your discard pile and attaches them to two of your bench Pokemon. So one and one, and then sends itself to the Lost Zone. And Circuitry GX walls out Pokemon that are reliant on special energy, like Mad Party, for example, if Mad Party ever comes back. Circuitry is cool, and Rhydon's really awesome. And then, of course, as if none of that were enough, there is Iron Hands EX that has the Ampu Very Much attack that does 120 damage, but you get to take an additional prize card. It doesn't just do 120 damage in this deck, though, because you have access to Electro Power from Lost Thunder that boosts the damage you're doing by 30. So if you're familiar with Mew VMAX and Power Tablets, this is the same general idea, but for lightning type Pokemon that do damage, right? So you're going to boost that damage on Ampu very much and still take the knockout, but still get that additional prize card. Thunder Mountain Prism Star reduces the attack cost of your lightning type Pokemon by one, also very helpful. And then of course, to finish everything off, you have Electric Generator and Max Elixir to kind of look at the top parts of your deck and accelerate either one energy, if it's Max Elixir, or two energy, if it's Electric Generator from the top six or five cards of your deck, respectively. Super, super cool, amazingly fun deck to play and quite consistent, actually. Although, to be fair, most decks in Eternal are usually pretty consistent because they have so many options. Of course, the flip side of that is that you just kind of want to cram everything into every deck, but it just doesn't fit. <laughs> All right, so you've seen some of the decks, you've seen some of the interesting things you can do with cards in the Eternal format. What are some of the most important cards in the format? Now, it's a huge, huge format, and someone I'm sure who is very familiar with the Eternal format is going to comment some card they think I missed in the comments. I am just here trying to hit the most important cards in the format here. Cards that see it quite a lot of play or extremely important for a large number of decks. So this is going to miss quite a few cards, but these are the most important staples for this format, in my opinion. So Baltoy. This Baltoy is used in most decks that play the Clay Dolphin Great Encounters, which we'll see here shortly because that is also a card in this list. And if they don't play that one, they play this one because it is fighting type and fighting type means that Brooklet Hill can find it. So decks that run Brooklet Hill will often run this one instead because they can still get their Baltoys out when they're setting up. What is this Great Encounters Clay Doll you mentioned? Well, here it is. Clay Doll from Great Encounters has the Poke Power cosmic power which says once during your turn you may choose up to two cards from your hand and put them on the bottom of your deck in any order if you do draw cards until you have six cards in your hand this basically just means that you get to thin your hand down by two cards and then draw until six this is everything be barrel wishes it were but it isn't this is the strongest draw engine in the entirety of the eternal format and it is amazing it is a stage one so it does require a bit of setup that makes it a little bit more fair frankly but it is an amazing draw engine and you absolutely want at least two copies of this card and two copies of each of these ball toy with it to always have ready to swap in and out of your eternal format decks. Up next, we have Lapras from Legend Maker. Lapras has the support navigation poke power and you're probably gonna think this sounds rather familiar because there's currently a Luminion V in format that does just this. So once during your turn, when you put Lapras onto your bench from your hand, you may search your deck for a supporter card. Show it to your opponent and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. That is definitely Luminion V, but there's a huge difference here. One, this is a single prize Pokemon, which means it's not an easy knockout target. Luminion V is super juicy. Great target for gusting and great target for knockouts. This is also an 80 HP Pokemon, which means if your deck is running level ball, you can find this Pokemon with level ball, making it even easier to find your supporter cards. Up next is a Zelf with Time Walk. The Poke Power Time Walk allows you to look at your prize cards, pick a Pokemon from there, show it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and then put a card from your hand into your prize card. So you basically get to trade a card from your hand with a card from your prize card, one of your Pokemon from your prize cards, to be clear. But this means that you can find your prize stage ones, your prize stage twos, something Hisuian Heavy Ball could never do. But it also doesn't require you to reshuffle your prize cards, which is quite nice. There is also Mr. Mime, which has already been mentioned. This is a bench barrier and the most common form of bench barrier in the eternal format. It does have 70 HP, a single retreat cost, and prevents all damage done to your bench Pokemon by attacks. That includes your Pokemon's attacks. So for example, in that Copperaja deck, the recoil damage that your bench would normally take is shielded by Mr. Mime, so you don't actually take it. Pretty cool stuff. And then, Unknown E. This one's kind of underused right now. I'm highlighting it in this video primarily because I think it could see more play in the future. Currently, it hasn't seen that much, but this one was brought up at one of our most recent Eternal Format tournaments, and I do think it's kind of worth highlighting here. So Unknown E has the Pokemon power Engage. 
It says, when you play unknown Eve from your hand, your opponent may shuffle their hand into their deck and draw four cards. Either way, you may shuffle your hand into your deck and draw four cards. So this is similar to Mars Shadow from Shining Legends or Giratina from Platinum in that you are able to shuffle your hand into your deck and draw four cards and your opponent also can do that. So you're not forcing them to do it unlike those cards. But what I like about this card is that it gives you an easy way to get some search and shuffle, right? So if you have a mysterious treasure, if you have a fog crystal, a quick ball, an ultra ball in your deck, you can find unknown E and use this to shuffle your hand and draw some more cards, which I think is worth having. And the cool thing is too, it's a common card, which means it's not going to be that all that expensive if you have to pick it up. Something to be aware of though, if you are running a deck that runs other unknown, this particular unknown has what we refer to as the unknown rule. So all of the Neo era unknown have this rule on the top here. I've kind of marked it up in red so you can see it there. It says you may have up to four basic Pokemon cards in your deck with unknown in their name. Unfortunately, if you run any of the unknown from the Neo era, you do need to be aware of this rule because even if you have just one of them in your deck, you're gonna be forced to abide by this deck building rule. The next thing you need to be aware of for the eternal format in terms of cards is your discard draw seven options. You need to pick one just like in in the expanded format, you can't have a mix and match situation going on. You need to either be running Juniper or Sycamore or Research in your deck. Doesn't matter which art for Research you're using, that is a rule that is borrowed from expanded and does apply to Eternal Format decks. So pick your discard, draw seven supporter, you're probably gonna need it. And then another card worth highlighting, this is a very popular card in the expanded format too. It's called Teammates. You can only play this card if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. Search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. If you're kind of getting your uh, your Pokemon knocked out pretty frequently, especially if you're a single prizer deck, this one is a pretty good option to have in your deck to get the pieces to keep your combo going. Uh, Teammates is a super good card, especially in Ultra Necrozma, but in other decks too. So it gets you your Pokemon, gets you your special energy or a switch option, whatever two things you happen to need. Teammates, they're your gals. And then Parallel City. Parallel City is an extraordinarily strong effect. If you're familiar with Collapse Stadium in, in standard format right now, uh, you'll be kind of raising your eyebrows at this one. So you'll notice the text kind of goes both ways here. So you kind of face the card towards your opponent, which which side of the card you want to affect them. So you'll see that blue, the blue top there has the effect that the player that it's facing cannot have more than three bench Pokemon. And then the, the other side, this red side says that your opponent's or that your players grass fire and water pokemon do 20 less damage when they attack when they attack rather so you're kind of hurting your own damage if you're running those types of decks but you're also forcing your opponent down to three bench very impactful could be very depending rather on the uh type of deck they're running because if they're running palkia parallel city is not so fun it takes their it takes all their pokemon away and then we here have floatstone floatstone of course very much a known quantity in expanded also very very important here in eternal it just sets your your Pokemon's retreat cost to zero, making it easy for you to find and create a pivot Pokemon to get your Pokemon in and out of play. So definitely have a couple of these on hand. There's Versus Seeker. This is one of the oldest prints, if not the oldest print of the card. This is literally grab a supporter card from your discard pile, put it into your hand. And if you haven't played a supporter card that turn, of course you can play it afterward. Super great effect, always worth playing. And a lot of decks, if not most decks in the eternal format, run three to four copies of this card because it is so powerful. It's very flexible. It makes for some very creative choices when you're picking your supporter cards for the deck. And then of course there's Battle Compressor. Battle Compressor doesn't show up in every deck, but it is still a very good card. You can simply search your deck for three cards and discard them. So if you need specific cards out of your deck, to thin your deck or to get them, get access to them via the discard pile, maybe you need a supporter card in the discard pile for Versus Seeker. That's certainly a way you could do it. Throw it in the discard pile of Battle Compressor and Versus Seeker it out. This also works for decks like United Wings that need their attackers in the discard pile to do extra damage. So there's that too. Up next we have Faba. Faba is a supporter card from Lost Thunder that says choose a Pokemon tool or special energy card attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon, or any stadium card in play and put it in the Lost Zone. This is a great way to counter decks that are super reliant on stadiums, tools, or special energy. Similarly, you have access to Windstorm that gets rid of Pokemon tool cards or stadium cards. And if you aren't made of money or don't have Windstorms on hand, of course you can run the identically functional 
field blower. Two really good cards. Well, three. All three of them are good. And of course, next we have the single strongest gust option in the eternal format. No, gust of wind is not legal. No, we don't have the original Pokemon catcher. So Guzma is going to be your strongest gust option. Yes, even with prime catcher because you can versus seeker this. Uh, switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. If you do switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, you're pulling one of their Pokemon forward and then switching one of your gears from the bench into the active spot. Extraordinarily strong effect. Pokemon players that have not played with this card or with prime catcher in format probably don't quite grasp how powerful this effect is but trust me when i say it is ridiculous you absolutely need a couple of one to two copies of this in any deck you're playing because you need to gust and this is the card that's going to do it boss's orders not it you're just not really ever going to be dealing with boss's orders or lysander for that matter in eternal format also do be aware that if for whatever reason you are playing one of those two cards in your deck it needs to be one or the other not both just like the research clause you also cannot have both lysander and boss's orders in your deck so you have to pick one you're going to play Guzma anyway, so that's not going to be a problem. Up next, we have Pow Hand Extension. That is very much like Counter Catcher in that you're able to gust up one of your opponent's Pokemon from their bench when you are behind on prize card. But you also have a second option that you can do instead, which is to move an energy card attached to the defending Pokemon to another one of their Pokemon, which is pretty nifty if you're trying to stall them out. And of course, there is Counter Catcher. So if four Pow Hand Extension isn't enough, you can, of course, run Counter Catcher. Now, something I should highlight, most of the staples in this video are only going to be cards that are not currently found in the standard format because cards like Iono and, and even this Counter Catcher, they're really known quantities. Most of them are also good in Eternal format. And I want to highlight the cards that you may not be familiar with. So do keep that in mind. Counter Catcher is on here as an exception, not the rule. So like I said, stuff like Iono, not on this list. But her sister, not really a sister, but she might as well be, is Marnie. And she is on this list because she is also a very good card in this format. Each player shuffles their hand and puts it on the bottom of their deck. If either player put any cards on the bottom of their deck in this way, you draw five cards and your opponent draws four. This is an amazing disruption option in the format and you absolutely want to have at least one copy of Marnie available to you when you're deck building. So grab one copy if you don't have it already. And then there's In, which functions very similarly to Iono, except instead of shuffling all the cards and putting them on the bottom of the decks, you're going to be just shuffling them directly into the deck. So there is that little bit of difference there and sometimes that does matter. So just keep that in mind. Options, options, options. And then finally, there is Rocket's Admin, which is mostly identical to N, except it gives you the option to draw up to that number of cards. So for example, if you wanted to choose just one card off of a Rocket's Admin, maybe to avoid decking yourself out, you could in fact do that. Up next, we have three of the most important A specs in this format that are not the new A specs from Temporal Forces or past that. Uh, the first, of course, is going to be Computer Search, the de facto A spec of choice in any deck in Expanded and previously mostly Eternal also, although Prime Catcher is giving it a run for its money. Uh, Computer Search, of course, says discard two cards from your hand, search your deck for a card, and put it into your hand. So you are just getting whatever card it is you want out of your hand with an item card. Super strong. And then there is, of course, Dowsing Machine. Discard two cards from your hand, put a trainer card from your discard pile into your hand. So you're getting, you're recovering a trainer card. And then there is Life Do, which I mentioned earlier when we were talking about Ultra Necrozma that says if the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out, your opponent takes one fewer prize card. So you're reducing the amount of prize cards your opponent takes for the knockout. The cool thing is, as this is a tool card, you can recycle it in a couple of different ways and keep and keep abusing it to prevent your opponent from taking prizes. Some interesting and important staples in the recovery section. So recovering resources here. There is Rescue Stretcher from Guardians Rising. That gives you two options. You can either put a Pokemon card from your discard pile directly into your hand or shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. So depending on the situation, you might need one or the other. You have choices. There is also Nightly Garbage Run, which is a very important card in this format. It says, choose up to three basic Pokemon cards, evolution cards, and or basic energy cards from your discard pile, show them to your opponent, and shuffle them into your deck. Now you might be thinking, well, that just seems like a worse version of Super Rod, because now I can't pick like V Union Pokemon, or Legend Pokemon, or Baby Pokemon. Well, actually, you can. As a matter of fact, because of a ruling that was made when Diamond and Pearl first rolled into the scene, or rolled up onto the scene rather. Uh, this is identical functionally to Super Rod. So take your pick, pick your poison. If you have Super Rods on hand, use those. If you have or want to use Nightly Garbage Run, it is going to function the same. Pick them out of your discard pile, show them to your opponent and shuffle them right back in. All right, now there is also Special Charge, a pretty important card if you're running a special energy heavy deck. It allows you to shuffle two special energy cards from your discard pile back into your deck. This is an extraordinarily useful way to get a couple of energy back into the deck. 
so that you can have them for later. And then the most popular ball card in all of the Eternal format is Luxury Ball. Nearly every deck runs one copy of this card and just one copy of this card. It says, search your deck for a Pokemon, that's any Pokemon, excluding Pokemon level X. Show it to your opponent and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. If any Luxury Ball is in your discard pile, you can't play this card. So you don't really need more than one because of that last clause there. But in most decks, this effectively serves as a Master Ball without being an ace spec. Just search your deck for a Pokemon. Level X's are not super popular in the Eternal format, although they do see some play. So Luxury Ball is your guy for getting your Pokemon. There's also Evolution Incense from Sword and Shield base set that lets you search your deck for an Evolution Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand and then shuffle your deck. So that's quite nice when you're looking for some Evolution Pokemon, but you don't or can't discard cards. And of course there's Quick Ball, which lets you find a basic Pokemon and then abuse whatever ability or Poke Power that it might have. So the next question is, where can I play the Eternal Format? If you are on my Discord server, you can jump into the Eternal Format channel. That's hashtag Eternal and ask, hey, does anyone want to play some Eternal Format games? Chances are there is somebody that does. People love the format and for good reason. It's a very fun format. You're most likely going to be playing there with people on either untapped.in or ptcgsim.online. Either is a perfectly valid option and both have their advantages. If you're not already in my Discord server, you can join at justinbasil.com slash Discord. If you want to play with physical cards, you can, of course, find friends and play physically with them. And if you happen to be in the San Antonio area, you can join us for our monthly Eternal Format tournaments. So as of posting, our next Eternal Format tournament here will be on April 6, 2024. And that is when we will have a tournament featuring cards from the original base set all the way through Temporal Forces and we'll get to see who the next winner is. It'll be quite fun. So again, if you're in the San Antonio area, you can always join us physically, bring your deck. Proxies, of course, are allowed. World Championship cards are allowed. As long as they're printed proxies, you're good. To if you need to learn more still about the Eternal Format, maybe some of, see some of the cards in the ban list, see some of the, the finer details on rulings and rules and how cards work in this format, you can, of course, jump to justinbasil.com slash eternal and dig in. And I recommend that you do because there's a lot to learn there. And it's really fun. Anyway, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you'll enjoy the Eternal Format with us. Hope to see you soon in the Eternal Format channel.